The time for minor skirmishes is over. We now prepare for war. The villain Longshanks is poised across the river forth and threaten the town of Sterling with a force of men-at-arms, heavy cavalry, and a multitude of archers. Our newly formed army marches southward to establish our own base and attack the English before they can ready their troops. Scenario 5, the Battle of Stirling. As you can see, this is like a random map game. They want us to keep exploring. Destroy the English Tower. There are also two outposts in this game. The time has come to take the offensive. The English have a fort with the town of Stirling. If we can defeat the English here, they may think twice about their invasion of Scotland. Scout cavalry are poor fighters, but they can see great distance. You can use your scout cavalry to explore the rest of the map and find the key. Yes, you can. To win, destroy the English tower to the west. Before we attack the English to the west, we need to build up our forces. Doing so now. Have your villagers start gathering food and wood. Keep making villagers at your town center until you have ten. The more villagers you have, the faster your resources. There are also things you can research to help you out. Hill to shed protects the only access to your town. That hill. It would be a good idea to build a watchtower on this hill once you advance to the feudal age. Again, feudal. It's feudal. Person seems to roll his R's. The hell's actually. English outpost. You're close to an English base. You better not knock down this wall until you've got an army of about 12 soldiers. Another English outpost and the wall. An English outpost. You know what to do. Knock it down. <laughs> Again. I said there were more of them in this campaign, did I not? Houses. We don't want to get house, do we? More about what I like about this game. I do like the noises the villagers make when they speak and move. Well, all the units actually have specific noises. They speak in foreign languages anyway. Kind of like the Sims speaking Simlish, you know? I was like pretending to speak Simlish even though I don't know a word of it. Use your villagers to build a mill near your forage bushes. I'm going to do that. I'll build another mill up beside the deer, which we're going to scout for later. They're up the way. Mills are useful. I don't think there are any boars on this map. You can gain more food by building fishing ships. Fishing ships, have your villagers build a dock in the water in the south. That's what I'm going to do. See? Villagers can also build farms. Build four farms near your mill when your forage bushes are depleted. Each farm needs only one villager working on it. Farms are annoying, but when the conquerors came out, you could have farm queues, so it made them less annoying. Provided you have enough wood, you can just queue up the farms and they'll automatically rebuild the farms, instead of clicking on your farms every now and then. There are deer up there. I'm going to put these here just for the sake of making it look nice, because they've got two outposts, so why shouldn't I? Eventually there'll be a tower, as I mentioned before. Should be fun. I mentioned I don't just like sound of how the people talk here, I do love the music of Age of Empires as well. Great. Absolutely wonderful. This was my music before I really got into music. Age of Empires music would be what I'm listening to. So, see? That's 10 militia. Ah, and they're gone, so this guy's going to start exploring. If 
fishing ships could explore as well. Ah, see, they come from up there, so I got mixed up. I expected them to come from straight along the path, but they did not. Here, little bees. I was told never to use the town bell because it takes your economy down. Coming to attack. To protect your villagers, you can use the town bell to garrison them in your town center. Click your town center, then click town bell. Never ever use the town bell. Garrison people in your town center, but never ever use the town bell. Actually garrison like an archer in your town center? I'm not sure if you can actually do that. I think you can. Remember, to win we have to destroy that English tower and all the English soldiers. Which won't be terribly hard. I'm sending these two soldiers off to get healed in the town centre. And yeah, that is proof that you can put soldiers inside the town centre. Now that you've reached the view plane, concentrate on making some soldiers to fight the enemy. You will need at least 12. Remember, you can upgrade your militia to men-at-arms at the barracks. You should always upgrade soldiers when you can afford them. Remember to upgrade your weapons and arms at the blacksmith. You do have a blacksmith, don't you? Not yet. I'm putting up a tower for it. Everything else you said is completely correct. I'm putting up two towers, actually. My friend said that this is not very um, worthy of being called Sterling because it was the Sterling Bridge, wasn't it? And there's no bridge in this game, although bridges do exist in Age of Empires. I guess it didn't feel like making it into the battle Sterling Bridge or whatnot. It actually does say, though, in the end credit sequence, or what do you call it that, the end story sequence of this, we held the coast. So this is them holding the coast. Sterling Bridge in this campaign was apparently taken by William. William hasn't showed up yet. He showed up in the last episode. Again, after this is done, this campaign, the William Wallace learning campaign, we'll be going on to Joan of Arc. After that, Saladin. That's Saladin. After that, Genghis Khan. That's Temujin. Genghis Khan. And after that, we will be doing Frederick Barbarossa, the Holy Roman Emperor. Then we'll be going to the Conquerors. Attila the Hun, followed by El Cid, followed by Montezuma, followed by Battles of the Conquerors in chronological order, then we get to go on to the Forgotten Campaign. Ulrich the Goth, Dracula, Bari, some Indian guy whose name I can't pronounce, Battles of the Forgotten, which is kind of like Battles of the Conquerors, and that's not in order. Now you have alert enough force to attack the English base. Charge! Instead of stuffering casualties, I think I'll just wait until I've completely outnumbered them, then I'll send my men in. Of course, I will keep my villagers working, yeah. My men are there, they're ready to go forward and attack. Time to knock down that wall, eh? And down she goes. Leave that last piece just enough to get in and out. There's still more guys in there. These guys notice they're on stand ground, and the other guys stay on defensive mode. The two cavalry units go after the archers. I lost one archer, he's being replaced. Good job! You've eliminated the English soldiers. Now destroy that tower and our victory will be complete! Haha, -ha, we won! Good job! You've destroyed the English camp. The Battle of Stirling is sure to end in victory for the Scots. How did you know how to build up? 
advance through the ages, and find and fight your enemies, you have all the basic skills you need to play a random map game, the most common type of game in Age of Empires 2. Sterling was our first great victory. Even as we held the coastline, word came in that the Sterling Bridge had been held by a force of Scots led by the mythical knight of whom so many have spoken. Now we know his name. Sir William Wallace, the Hammer of the English. Edward Longshank's name's Wallace a traitor and a criminal. But Sir William replies that he cannot be a traitor since he never swore fealty to an English king. With Wallace leading our armies, the men fight with renewed vigor. Perhaps the tide of our misfortunes is about to turn. <laughs> 